So welcome. We are going to be going over Unit 5, States of Consciousness, Module 23, Sleep Patterns and Sleep Theories. Um, this is uh, aligned to Meyer Psychology for the AP Course, third edition textbook. First up, the learning targets for this module. You should be able to describe sleep as a state of consciousness. You should be able to describe how our biological rhythms influence our daily functioning. You should also be able to describe the biological rhythm of our sleeping and dreaming stages, explain how biology and environment interact in our sleep patterns, and describe the functions of sleep. Why do we sleep? What is the purpose of it? <clears throat> Excuse me. So what is sleep? <laughs> we all do it, but what is it really? It's a periodic natural loss of consciousness. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's what you really need to remember. That it is a, you're losing consciousness when you are sleeping. <clears throat> it's as distinct from unconsciousness resulting from a coma, general anesthe anesthesia, or hibernation, I suppose, if you're a bear. <laughs> what is the circadian rhythm? Our bodies roughly synchronize with the 24-hour cycle of the day and night thanks to an internal biological clock that we call the circadian rhythm. And this circadian rhythm impacts our sleep-wake cycles, temperature, hormonal, and digestive cycles as well. Body temperature rises as dawn nears, peaks during the day, dips in the afternoon, and then drops again in the evening. Uh, perhaps if you've ever, you may have measured that at different times or, or noticed if you're monitoring for a fever that just your, your temperature actually does change a little bit throughout the day and evening and um, through the night. Thinking and memory improve as we approach our daily peak in circadian arousal. I don't think I'm to that point yet in the day. <laughs> Some people feel like <clears throat> they might be more of those morning larks or more of those night owls, but you probably have a good idea for when you reach that thinking and memory peak time for yourself. And it is different for different people. Um, and that can be really challenging depending on how early you have to eat up for school or your job or how early you need to go to bed or how late you stay up, those kind of things. Age and experience may alter our circadian rhythm. So how do psychologists research the rhythms that occur during sleep? So they use EEGs. Um, Electroencephalograms record brainwave activity while sleeping. Here are some pictures and we're gonna go over some of these different wave patterns that occur during sleep. So alpha waves are when you're in bed with your eyes closed and if you were being monitored by a researcher, the researcher in the next room would see on the EEG the relatively slow alpha waves of your awake but relaxed state. Then you slowly enter sleep. You can see the wake and beta waves on top. Moving into sleep, we seem unaware of that exact moment when we fall into sleep. But if someone was monitoring your EEG, they would be able to tell. So you can see on the monitor when this person fell asleep. But it's hard for you to know exactly when you're falling asleep. What are the two divisions of sleep stages that researchers study? NREM and REM. So NREM is the non-rapid eye movement sleep. It basically encompasses all of the stages except for REM, rapid eye movement sleep. Um, and the REM sleep is a reoccurring sleep stage during which vivid dreams are commonly occur. So if you're dreaming, you're in REM. What is NREM1 stage sleep? During this brief NREM1 sleep, you may experience fantastic images re resembling hallucinations. You may have a sensation of falling or floating weightlessly. Happens to me all the time. You'll wake up. <laughs> And your arm, like your arm jerks, your leg jerks, and um, that wakes you up. These, I, this is a hard word, <laughs> these hypnagogic gogic sensations may later be incorporated into your memories. So NREM two stage sleep. You then relax more deeply and begin about 20 minutes of NREM two sleep with this periodic sleep spindles, they're called bursts of rapid rhythmic brainwave activity and K complexes. Although you could still be awakened without too much difficulty, you're now clearly asleep. 
Now, NREM stage three, during this slow wave sleep, which lasts for about 30 minutes, your brain emits large, slow, what are called delta waves. Can you see those on the image there? Those really, the taller ones that have higher peaks, and you are hard to awaken if you are in your deep delta wave sleep. Have you ever said that thunder was so loud last night only to have a friend or family member say, what thunder? Those who missed a storm may have been at that point been in their delta sleep. How do we move through the stages of sleep in a night? So cycling through sleep stages is sort of like being on a roller coaster. It's not like you kind of go into one and you go the whole way to the deepest and then you come back out. It's sort of a roller coaster of going down and back up and down and back up. So in the, what's interesting to note is that your REM, your rapid eye movement sleep where your dreaming occurs increases, the amount that you're in your REM sleep increases um, as the night progresses. So a tip if you are taking the AP exam, study the sleep cycle carefully. One common mistake students make is to believe that REM sleep comes directly after NREM3 sleep. As you can see in that previous um, visual, it doesn't. Generally, NREM2 follows NREM3, then comes REM. This clarification will probably help you if you take the AP exam. So what exactly is rapid eye movement sleep? It's a recurring sleep stage during which vivid dreams commonly occur. It's also known often as paradoxical sleep because the muscles are relaxed except for minor twitches um, and you really aren't able to move, but other body systems are active. So researchers using an EEG um, have studied lots of people um, and are very interested in REM sleep. REM sleep. And Researchers were able to see that the sleeper's eyes moved rapidly from left to right while emitting rapid sawtooth brain waves. So you can see the images of those brain waves. So, what are some of the physiological events that occur within your body during REM? Your heart rate rises, breathing becomes rapid um, and irregular. Uh, Different things happen. Genitals may become aroused. Muscle paralysis occurs except for an occasional twitch. So your body's not moving, really able to move much except for an occasional, occasional twitch when you're having a lot of those um, really fantastical dreams that might be occurring. How, do, how does our sleep change when we age? As people age, sleep becomes more fragile with awakenings commonly occurring more often in older adults. So I can remember this so well with my one, my one grandmother would always, she constantly talked about how much she would wake up through the night. And I just remember that for the last decade of her life, her constantly saying, you know, she would go to bed and she would be up, you know, like seven times a night and it would be really challenging for her then the next day. And so this, this fragility of sleep becomes more common as adults get older, as you can see from this visual. How do biology and environment interact in our sleep patterns? There does appear to be some genetic influence for our sleep patterns. <laughs> I come from a family of people who like to sleep and I definitely fall in that same category as, a, as opposed to some other people I know who are from families that people that are get much less sleep and need much less sleep or they have a lot of difficulty sleeping. There does seem to be a genetic influence to sleeping. Um, but there's also cultural inf influence. In Britain, Canada, Germany, Japan, and the US, adults average seven hours of sleep a night on work days and seven to eight hours on other days. Why do there is information that American students get less counterpart, less sleep than some of their counterparts? And what they note in the, in the textbook is compared to Australia, their Australian counterparts. And some of the reasons might be earlier start times, increased extracurricular activities, and lack of enforced bedtimes. <laughs> Those are some of the reasons that are suggested about why American students get less sleep, which is really problematic. What three environmental factors play a role in our biological ability to sleep? Well, modern electric lighting. Well, when we didn't have electricity, it was sort of, humans were more likely to sleep when it got dark and wake up when it got light. I mean, we had candles and things like that for a while, but it was just not quite the same. But now lighting makes our, you know, kind of tricks our body a little bit. Things like shift work, 
working the night shift can um, really have an effect on our biological ability to sleep. And then of course, one of the more recent, recent ones is social media diversions, um, keeping people up really late at night. The suprachiasmatic nucleus is a pair of cell clusters in the hypothalamus that sort of controls that circadian rhythm. In response to light, it causes the brain's pineal glands to do, decrease its production of sleep-inducing hormone melatonin. You may have heard melatonin is something that's commonly talked about now to give to people that are having trouble falling asleep. So you can see how that's related to this SCN. Um, so in response to light, again, the SCN causes the pineal glands to, to decrease its production of sleep-inducing hormone melatonin in the morning and to increase it in the evening, thus modifying our feelings of sleepiness. How does the SCN react during the day? So light striking the retina signals the SCN to suppress the pineal glands production of the sleep hormone mel melatonin. So light is really involved. So you can see how it can be problematic if you live in a place that is um, like in northern parts of Alaska or near the Arctic Circle, when the, for long periods of time, it's really light um, for most of the, of the day or during the winter when it's really dark for most of the day. So it can really trick our brains a little bit and it can really affect people's sleep cycles. So at night, the SCN quiets down, allowing the pineal gland to release the melatonin into the bloodstream. What are the functions of sleep? So why do we sleep? I have in my class, I've had several students um, in my current class and in previous classes, they talk about how they would just wish they could sleep less to be able to get more done. But it's important to understand that sleep is really important and it serves very important functions within our ability to um, navigate the world. So in terms of protection at the end of the days, hunting, gathering, and travel, our ancestors were better off asleep in a cave out of harm's way. So that's sort of why, you know, evolu from an evolutionary perspective, why we sleep. We go, um, we weren't able to protect ourselves as humans that well at night, so we needed to go out of harm's way and protect ourselves in a cave. Those who didn't wander around dark cliffs were more likely to leave descendants. And that would be how natural selection happens. So recuperation though. Sleep helps restore the immune system and repair brain tissues. So just think about that. You're By sleeping, which so many of us love to do, we are helping our body so much. We are restoring our immune system to be able to fight off disease and infection and repairing our brain tissues. This is a really fascinating and growing area of research in terms of neuroscience and understanding how, I just saw an article a couple of weeks ago, just like how much sleep is just so reparative to our brain. It like flushes out the toxins. So we need sleep. Sleep gives resting neurons time to repair themselves while pruning or we weakening unused connections. So the restoration and building function of sleep, sleep consolidates our memories. So it improves your memory to get more sleep. So if you want to do well on an exam or do well remembering something or performing in some way in an athletic event or something else, sleep consolidates our memories by replaying recent learning and strengthening those neural connections. So I think a lot of times, unfortunately, we think of sleep as being something that we um, can just get away with reducing. But sleep is so important. And hopefully after reading through this unit, you will really understand that and understand how important sleep is for so many things, like in terms of your learning for this class and um, in other classes and just performing in the world, sleep is very, very important. It also feeds our creative thinking. Dreams can inspire noteworthy artistic and scientific achievement. And a complete night's sleep gives a boost to our thinking and learning. What are some other functions of sleep? Well, it supports growth. Uh, this is what I keep telling uh, my 12 year old son, although he loves to sleep so much, so it's not really a problem. During slow wave sleep, which occurs mostly in the first half of a night's sleep, the pituitary gland releases human growth hormone, which is necessary for muscle development. Okay, so we're back to our learning targets. So again, sleep is the periodic natural loss of consciousness as distinct from unconscious resulting from a coma, general anesthesia, or that hibernation. Our bodies have an internal biological clock roughly synchronized with the 24-hour cycle of night and day. This is called the circadian rhythm, 
and it appears in our daily patterns of body temperature, arousal, sleeping, and waking. Age and experiences seem to alter these patterns a bit, resetting our biological clock. In terms of the stages, the biological rhythm of our sleep, sleeping and dreaming stages, as we begin to relax, alpha waves are emitted. Sleep has four distinct stages through which we cycle about every 90 minutes. NREM1 is that brief near waking sleep with irregular brain waves. Hallucinations and other sensations may occur. Then NREM2 is characterized by the sleep spindles. And then our deep sleep, our slow delta waves, that's NREM3 sleep. REM, probably you've heard of REM sleep, most likely. Rapid eye movement sleep is described as a paradoxical sleep stage because of internal arousal, but external calm. The body is almost, it almost is like it's paralyzed. You can do have some twitches, but it's nearly paralyzed. It includes most dreaming and length, most dreaming, not all. I may have misspoken earlier on. It's not all dreaming, but it is most dreaming and lengthens as the night goes on. So you might start off in a shorter amount of REM sleep at the beginning, but as you prog progress through the sleep stages, your amount of REM sleep usually will increase. During a normal night's sleep, NREM3 sleep shortens and REM and NREM2 sleep lengthens. How does biology and environment interact in our sleep patterns? Well, biology, our circadian rhythm, as well as our age and our body's production of melatonin, um, influenced by the brain's suprachiasmatic nucleus, interact with our cultural expectations and individual behaviors to determine our sleeping and waking, pa waking patterns. Being bathed in light or deprived of light can disrupt our 24 hour biological clock. Night shift workers may experience a chronic state of this desynchronization, which can be really problematic. Okay, finally, what are the functions of sleep? There are many. Um, earlier on in our evolutionary history, it played a protective role in human evolution by keeping us safe during protect potentially dangerous periods where we we're less likely to be able to defend ourselves against predators. It also helps restore and repair damaged neurons. Now, it um, consolidates our memories by replaying recent learning and strengthening neural connections, promotes creative problem solving the next day, and during that slow wave sleep, the pituitary gland secretes a human growth hormone. It actually helps you grow. Sleeping helps you grow. All of these things, think about that. Res restores and repairs our neurons, consolidates our memories, promotes our creativity, and helps us grow. Some really important functions of sleep and why it's so very, very, very important. All right. Thanks for listening to this module. Take care.